Moin Moin! Welcome to my German language project. My name is Undine, I'm your host and today we're going to talk about German bu bureaucracy. Yeah. So I don't know what it is for you. For me it's doing your taxes. But if you have come in contact with German bureaucracy at some point, you know how annoying it is. If you haven't yet, this is your hint from the universe to be prepared. Now I would say it's a cliche, it's, it's almost like a meme how terrifying German bureaucracy is. There are songs about it. Einen Antrag auf Erteilung eines Antrag it's a joke that isn't funny anymore because everybody knows it's true that German bureaucracy is just horribly annoying and nobody wants to put up with but we all have to and we hate it and if you want to build a house, buy a car, give someone else money. Wherever you go, there is paperwork attached to it, even at work. When I worked as a nurse, like, I don't know, 20% of my time was wasted on just writing down stuff, probably more. So if you come here, just be aware of that. There is a lot of bureaucracy, but there's also an upside to this. It's kind of systematic and it's kind of self-explanatory. All you need to be able to deal with German bureaucracy is perfect German knowledge. That's all. Trust me, it's, it's that easy. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's, it's really hard to understand German bureaucracy without good German language knowledge. And you can easily mistake something for something it's not if you don't know what a certain word means. So here's my tip number one on how to deal with this. Find a German to help you. Or find a translator but this will probably be harder than finding finding a friend who will help you if you are a refugee there are like free law clinics there are organizations especially if you are a student if or if you want to be a student you can just go to these university centers like I remember when uh, a lot of Syrian refugees were coming to Germany I would help out then too and we had uh, this law clinic as it was called with which was basically made to help refugee students to get used to German bureaucracy, German laws, help them with any kinds of issues with their um, seeking asylum claims and stuff like that. Okay, so there are institutions like this, there are nonprofit organizations like this, and initiatives, and a lot of volunteers that will help you. You just have to find them. Okay, and how do you find them? Well, you Google them. All right, and if that is something that leads to nothing for you, you just call your university's help desk or, or you go to your university's general information center. Sometimes there's like a counter which is in the main building and you can just go there and ask them for help. All right, so if you're not a student, there will also be some sort of organization that can help you, but they might not be as friendly and it might be a little bit more difficult. Depending on where you are and if you are whether you are an immigrant or a refugee, you will have different people that you will need to ask. But ask for help before it's too late because deadlines in Germany are literally deadlines. After that nothing works, okay? There are usually no exceptions for anything being late. I have seen people lose their spot in the university over being late. Like literally, I've uh, read a story from a law student who had like all the exams done but handed in one thing one day late or something and his five years of law school gone. They didn't accept him back in. He became a writer then. So let this be a reminder for you that Germans are very serious about any kind of deadline. If you have a tax deadline though, you can usually get an, an extension but you need to have a good reason for that. As in, I was sick, I had trouble with this and, and that. And I have done this multiple times, like ask for an extension. And they would be like more annoyed with me the more extensions I wanted. Like the, it would become a shorter period of time and like get your shit together until then, please. Like finally, could you get your shit together? And then in the end, you will not get another one. You know, you will just have to stick to the deadline unless you're in hospital, I guess. Now what to do if you get some sort of Bescheid and you think like, oh my God, what do I do with this? Is this final? No, 
usually you can go into you can do something that is called in Widerspruch gehen to go into Widerspruch. This is not law advice. I'm not a lawyer. Okay, I'm not advising you to do anything. I'm just talking from my experience from working with a with a bunch of refugees and immigrants and people who just had trouble with that. So for instance, one of my friends, he got a letter from the health insurance, Krankenkasse. He got a letter and a letter said, you have to pay this amount of money because we just pauschal did some basic calculation of your income. We assume you had that kind of income. So that is the percentage you have to pay. Uh, please give us 3000 bucks because you didn't manage to pay your health insurance over the last few months and we couldn't reach you. So um, here is our bank account, just transfer the money. And he was in shock. He was like, what the fuck? Like, I don't have that money. I didn't even work. I had, I had like a mini job. And how, how is it that I have to pay health insurance here? Well, everyone has to pay health insurance here. So um, what we did was I called the health insurance for him and I just told them that they have to send another letter and because he did not earn that kind of money and their calculation was wrong and so they were very cooperative with me because I speak fluent German obviously. So they would send that right away. I would help him fill out the form. I say, you have to provide your income, like all of your paychecks. You have to show them to them, send a copy, not the original, never send the original anywhere unless you explicitly ask for the original, all right? So that happened and it was fine. He only had to pay a few hundred bucks and from that on, they had his bank account and they would just uh, get the money from there via Bank Einzug. All right, no problem. So don't panic if something like that happens to you, if you get some sort of invoice or Bescheid or someone asking you to pay back money that you were supposed to pay back. Sometimes they are wrong too and you can always talk to them and call them. Just, I would recommend whenever you have an interaction with a German Behörde, you have to call, all right? You have an assigned person in that Behörde, in that, in that public office or what, is, what it is, that is assigned to you by your name, usually because everyone from, let's say, um, A to C has a, a person who is responsible for the people with the surname starting with A to C, all right? So this is always gonna be the same person and you can always call, usually you can call the same person. And I know that it's like that in health insurance uh, and it's also in that in the taxes, uh, Finanzamt. Yeah, that one. So you just talk to your zuständiger Mitarbeiter and they will help you out. They will try to make it easier they will try to answer your questions and you have to be friendly and you have to be on point. You better get someone who can speak German to help you. You cannot expect if you call the Finanzamt that they know English. They probably don't and even if they do, they will be kind of annoyed with you, all right? They don't want your life story, they want your money. Anyway, what I wanted to say is it usually helps to give them a call. You can also try and show up in person but if you don't speak German, kind of not so optimal idea, all right? Try to find someone to come with you and make an appointment first, don't just show up. And I would say that at least 90% of issues can be resolved with a phone call. Emails often get lost, as in people just don't wanna answer or they answer like a week later and then your deadline might be due and you are doomed. So now what happens if you don't comply with the German authority? Let's say they ask you for money or to hand in some paperwork. Well, if you don't comply with what they want, you will be fined. And depending on who wants what from you, if it's like some private company and you didn't pay your bill, well, they will send you an Inkasso firma and they will knock on your door and just get the money out of you somehow. That's what they'll do. Before that, they will send you three letters. And if you ever don't pay a bill, you will get two Mahnungen, two reminders that you have to pay the money. And if you don't pay it after that, they will send you an Inkasso firma, a debt collecting agency. So don't let it come to that. In Germany, I made another video about that. Punctuality is very important. Paying your bills is very important. You cannot postpone that kind of stuff. Now back to average paperwork. Let's say you wanna get into a university or something like that and you need to fill out all these forms. How do you do it? Well, first of all, just be truthful 
and then get a friend who translates it for you. It always comes back to that. If you're a foreigner, you need somebody to help you. Don't be afraid of that. It's worse. Everything that, that happens if you don't fill out the forms correctly is worse than asking somebody for help. So if that is the only thing you take away from this video, I'm happy. That's all I want. Just ask for help. I know it's hard to get into contact with Germans. It's hard to make friends here as hard as in probably a lot of Central European countries. Maybe it's easier in Italy. I don't know. But you know, I don't know if people are more chill there. But I know it's hard to make friends here. But trust me, everything that happens after you making a mistake on a form or just like you will be more annoyed with that. Now, can I recommend any sort of translation software? Well, I could, but most of them are professional software that costs a lot of money, like stuff that uh, medical professionals use. And um, I wouldn't waste the money on that, you know, especially if you're a student or you're just new to the country, you, you need to take care of your resources and not spend a lot of money. Maybe you want to find an apartment and you should not waste money on that. Should you give your money to a professional translator? Well, unless it's for your CV, I would say no. Like maybe if you're really, if you're looking for a more high profile job, you already have a degree and you really want to make sure that everything is perfect. Well, yeah, in that situation, you could get a translator. And also if it's required, you know, if it's required to have your documents translated, well, then you should get somebody to do this and have an authority put a stamp on it. There are all sorts of authorities that can validate your documents um, and copies of your documents by putting a stamp on it and saying like, yeah, this is a validated copy. This is very important. You never hand in originals anywhere, anywhere. For no um, application ever, you would hand in your original certificate, birth certificate, your degree, anything like that. But sometimes it is required to have a validated copy or beglaubigte Kopie. I think this kind of thing is not as important as it was, let's say five to 10 years ago. In my time when I was looking for a job, I needed that kind of thing for my Staatsexamen. And when I was applying to jobs, I would need a, a certain number of validated copies of my Staatsexamen, of my uh, nursing degree, and also of my Abitur, my high school degree, to hand in to get these jobs. Nowadays, for the last few jobs I have applied to, I didn't really need it, but that might vary from occasion to occasion. And also maybe people, because you are a foreigner, would be like, well, we need proof that this thing is real. So just be prepared. If you need that kind of document, you don't want to hand it in late. You want to have it right there to present it to the person who asked for it. So yeah, that's all for now. If you have any questions about German bureaucracy, just let me know and I will try to help you out in the comments or make a second video about this kind of stuff. Good luck to you with your German bureaucracy problems. Don't be late. Don't miss a deadline and always ask for help.